um, the lady over there. Yes, you. Yes, you. you. No, 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 wait. Oh, oh, oh. no, 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 you, the lady in the second row. We're coming. Jesus, oh, gonna... oh, where, where, where? Just here. That's hard. I'm sorry. <laughs> I've left her before. She can come next one. Oh, okay. She can come next one. Hi. 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 I was wondering if you guys would go into the room of requirement, what would you find? Wow. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I don't, that's a good one. It depends on the scenario, I guess. If I was exceptionally thirsty, I'd hope water, but I, 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 I'm not sure. Well, you have no idea what the room of requirement is, have you? No. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> no, I was asked the same thing earlier about the mirror of error said, and I didn't have a good answer for that either, I'm afraid. So uh... might be, um, I might, there might be an iPad two in there. Maybe. Yes, you've got a fire with that. Yeah, a whole stack of them. I don't know if there's any knocking about anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> really there's got, there's a guy in the back who's so, either so tall or he's standing on a child. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, he's standing on a child. <laughs> Let's get the question from the lady that you went to, Jason. Sorry. Coming up. This is a, did you realise this would be a fitness? I know. He's had quite a workout. Uh, I want to say thank you first because Harry Potter's always been a part of my life and you made it come true for me. Um, and <laughs> second, um, what was the most difficult scene to film for you all? Um, wow, it's hard to pick one. This film. Yeah, 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 yeah that, that final stuff that you're yeah. doing. Yeah. Doing part one and part two simultaneously. I mean, I only had one line in part one, but I just know for all the crew, I mean, it was one that everyone had to really work tremendously hard on sure. um, to try and get it done. And, and for me as well, I mean, just had so much more to do in this film, and, and um, you know, the action stuff, the, there's still a lot of emotion, you know, people are dying in this movie. Um, and yeah, it was definitely the one that was most challenging for me anyway. Bit of love. The ear. There's a little bit, there's a little glimmer there. Uh, what about for you? Uh, the most difficult, I think, was the, was the first scene that I ever did, which was when I'm looking at Alan and I'm looking at Helena, who I both know very well, and they actually had to cheat the eye lines because of anybody's inability not to corpse on the first morning. So everyone, if you actually look at everyone's looking like this, in completely different ways. <laughs> because everyone was just so nervous, it was the first day of shoot for all of us. So, um, I'll yeah. second that. It was pretty bloody terrifying. Was it? Yeah, yeah definitely. It's... I was, I again, it took me more than a few days to say anything to anyone, but yeah. You it's... mean the big team were all at the table? Yeah, for sure. Well, yeah, it was, I felt like we were kind of surrounded by, um, by you know, it's kind of legends or heroes in a weird way. It takes a lot to pluck up the courage to say much, to be fair. My hardest scene was my very first day in 2002 because it was a scene with Richard Harris. Who uh, I went to drama school with Richard's son, Jared, and, and uh, Richard, who was the first Dumbledore, as you know, uh, who was utterly brilliant. And he was chatting and being very funny and, uh, and just telling these filthy and fabulous anecdotes. And then they said, action, and he just drilled me as Dumbledore. He just gave, he cut me no mercy. And I stood there and I felt terrified. I thought, is it my turn to speak? It's his turn to speak. Why is he speaking? And it's really, and I thought, I've got it wrong. I'm getting, I just felt like that all the eyes of the world were on me. And I realized what he was doing was being Richard Harris, who's being Dumbledore, and he, he completely made Lucius, you know, need a change of underwear. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm afraid we've got a time for one more question. Uh, do we have any questions? We haven't been up, we haven't been over here that much, we've asked one question. Is that this guy here? Thank you very much from everyone here. Where are you? Harry Potter is amazing. Where are you? Well, um, if there was one memory you could take from this entire experience, what would it be? <laughs> Those girls asking me to marry them. <laughs> Probably the first time. <laughs> is there? Is there? Is there a memory? Is there? It's very hard to pick one. Yeah. One solid memory. One of the first ones I remember was um, going through the Great Hall when we were like uh, eleven. One of the yeah. first scenes we ever shot. We had never seen the Great Hall before. It was deliberately not shown to us, so our expressions were genuine, if you will. Uh, and that was, yeah, a really, really sort of awe-inspiring time as a as a youngster. Um, and it kind of feels like, yeah, the, the next ten years kind of went in a bit of a blur, to be honest. With you. <laughs> I think uh, taking Michael Gambon on a roller coaster was pretty funny. Yeah, there are so many I think strange was, um, scenarios. When we were in Orlando, we did the opening of the theme park last like, year, and we, we, we told Michael, I said, fine, just go around a bit, no worries. It's a Julie Dragon thing, and it's like a big loop the loop. I mean, that was, uh, I'll never forget that. He was very excited. I don't think he will ever. He was a whole different colour when he came. Did he do that thing of taking a picture midway around at the Skinny's point where he was at? 
Oh, oh so bad. Yeah. It's fucking about somewhere. That's where I find that. Yeah. <laughs> Helen, have you got a... I think your last in memory from the experience. I think it would definitely be if that, that sort of 5 a.m. in Leavesden when everybody had come in, all the main actors had all been lined up, you know, Rafe had been in makeup for hours, somebody's running around and saying, okay, it's three minutes, and they're giving you the last of the props, and everybody's going around, okay, we're going to have fire, we're going to have action in this, okay, everybody knows there's going to be fire in this scene, animatronics are starting, I can't tell you what, because you haven't seen it yet, but various things twitching, you have Voldemort on one side, you know, the other side, you have hundreds of extras on either side, and the stunt guys are going through the final thing, and then somebody goes, okay, 30 seconds, and everybody's quiet, and somebody shouts, action! And Rafe stood there and was extraordinary with everyone listening. And then I can't tell you what happens, but then something happens. And we shot it for real. We didn't, it wasn't, and then we cut it, da, da, da. And this enormous, great fight starts happening. And the cameras are going around and you just say, this is epic. We don't make films like that anymore. And that was extraordinary. Wow. That was amazing. Wow. <laughs> I don't remember that, was that? Um, I, 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 actually, I remember, really I remember two things, I think. One is that the film, the people who put it together were so nice that the atmosphere on every film set trickles down from the top of the pyramid in every work environment. The people, the bosses define what the culture is. And David Heyman and David Barron who produced this, and David Yates who directed the last lot, um, they created a, a climate of people being kind to each other and encouraging everyone to be creative and come up with the best stuff. And the other thing they did, which was miraculous, you never hear, these films are, as you know, witness you all being here, they're very, very, very popular and loved. And every day that I worked over the 10 years, I was allowed to bring in guests, half a dozen guests. I brought kids in every single day that I worked. And somebody took them on a tour, and they went, sat in Dumbledore's chair, and they went to the Great Hall, and they went to the Creatures Workshop, they went to the Special Effects Workshop, and they came to the set. They often got to call Cut and Action. And so over the years, it's just given so much pleasure to so many people. But if I had one moment to remember, it was me and Gary Oldman had a fight in the, in the fifth film that didn't end up in the film, it was mostly cut. But we were left alone for weeks and weeks and weeks to shoot this special effects one. And every time Lucy is the series up on the rock, and I go, how about if I rub my wand down the cane, like send a double bolt and it'll wrap around him, they go, yeah, we do that. So we shoot that for one. And Gary would go, what about if I stand the floor and a, and a wave of rock knocks Lucy's over? And they go, yeah, yeah, we do that. We did all these amazing things, and at one point, Gary goes, how about, right, I throw the one, and it goes spinning to the right, and it comes out, and it comes out, and it goes suddenly and it just stabs him. <laughs> and I come up and I just put it in half. And David Yates goes, Gary, it's a kid's film. <laughs> and that's the moment I remember. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to miss chatting to you guys, it's so weird, um, and, but it's what a way to go out, it's, it's just brilliant, it's, it's congratulations to you all for, for everything you've given everyone over the last 10 years as well. Um, you can all see it, as it says here, July 15th, um, the premiere is going to be on Thursday night. <laughs> Oh, and then just a small one. Do you, do you, get, do you still get phased by those big events? Is it still a little bit scary with the same amount of car? No one's ever been to a premiere like this before. They've never shut Trafalgar Square. To get out of the red carpet and see Big Ben. <laughs> Maybe you all get a bong every time you come out. Like, <laughs> the last time I was in Chicago City was for the poll tax riots. That's the last time it was that exactly. big. This is but, a whole other so thing. Well, so what's freaky about it all, and what's freaky about Thursday night for all of us, you know, we're all like everybody. We have two legs and two arms, and we eat, and we go to the loo, and we sleep. And, and then on Thursday night, we're treated like we've just arrived from Valhalla or somewhere like that. And, and you know, we are no different, uh, obviously, I'm speaking of obviously, uh, mind-bugly obvious things. We're no different to anybody else. We get up, we go to the shops, and we, uh, you know, uh, and we have the same concerns. And so what's weird on Thursday night is briefly, you just have an insight into how much Harry Potter is affected and is loved by so many people around the world. And it can be very weird. It makes you, kind of, uh, it makes you dizzy. And what, what the best thing about Thursday night is that Friday morning will come, and we're still going to get up and brush our teeth and take our kids to school. For me and her, anyway. <laughs> Okay, before we say goodbye, we've got one final clip that we want to show you guys, um, which, which kind of slightly ties into what Helen was talking about earlier. So it's dim the lights. It's dim the lights.